Samneji? I think you can yes. start now. Yes, yes. So I request uh, Professor Sanjiti for delivering his talk of today on the topic Karma and Science. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining the session. Today, last uh, in the last session, we talked about the brain and its intricacies. Now, today we are going to talk a common subject, which will be more familiar to you rather than a boxed brain. Sensations and the perceptions. We are doing it daily. At the at every moment, we are confronted with the sensations and how we perceive it. My today's lecture, my aim is to educate you in a simple language, distinguish between the sensations and perceptions. Then what are our sensations? Are they panchendriya or more? How do we make meaningful interpretations? Then we come back to, we come to the second portion, perception, how the perception is selected, organized, and interpreted. My lecture throughout this one, I'll be correlating my scientific knowledge with the Jain philosophy. We are blessed with the many advances in the neurosciences, be it radiological, most important being functional MRI, I talked last time, and hormonal, and my, many genetic senses like that one. With the fMRI, in taking this slide into consideration, we can make out which portion of the brain gets illuminated or activated with the sensations. Like visual, you can make out the back of your brain, motor on the top of your head, Basal ganglia, default mode, all we can now make out while doing the functions or the while we are carrying out certain actions. Our whole sensations, they start from the sensory organs to the brain. It occurs in the three steps. And they are reception, means how we perceive, how the our body takes the sensations into consideration. Then we go into the transduction. The impulses which are coming, they are transferred into the neural impulses and then to the brain or to the other nervous structures. Definitions of the sensations. When receptors in sense organs are activated, we will be talking about all these sensations one by one. They allow stimuli to become neural signals. That is the basics of the sensations. And sensory reductions means everything which we sense may not go to the brain. It is filtered and analyzed before the messages are received by the brain. Whereas the perception, we'll be talking this later in the detail, is a constructive process to interpret and organize sensations in a meaningful way. Now the sensations, they can be divided into the external or the internal. We'll be talking other sensations also in the later on. Those which are external, the receptors are known as exteroceptors. Nothing exterior means outside and receptors are the, uh, the where the receipts are. And they can be either in the skin, located in our skin, majority are like touch, pressure, temperature, and pain. They all are clubbed into the one that is sensations of the touch. Then we go into the vestibular sense or the sense which uh, decides our balance. Kinesthesia or the body posture and movement and orientations. We'll be talking these one by one. And there are other sensations uh, which are with the outside world. They are smell, olfaction, taste, hearing, and vision. 
what we observe in this uh, during the evolution the first sensations uh, will be touch that's how the unicellular organisms even respond to the environment in or the like amoeba swims in the water and it uh, sense the environment through the chemical sensations the next is the taste further develop the smell vision and hearing is the last one to develop these were the exteroceptors the sensations which were there outside the body then the sensations which are coming within our own body they are specialized sense organs which responds to the uh, stimuli from visceral organs and the blood vessels they can be mechanical chemical thermal and many more they are concerned with the internal milieu temperature movement of the viscera blood pressure changes gas con concentration pressure and many more consciously most of us are not aware of the internal organ functioning in the brain also there are chemoreceptors which sense the changes in the ph in the blood or in the csf and many other things in addition to the exteroceptors and the interoceptors or the visceroceptors we have got certain special sensations which we need to consider they are sense of speech thought time magnetic receptions and non human animal sensations so these sensations are more prominent in the animal kingdom than in the human being though human being does have electroception echolalation infrared radiations ultraviolet and polar polarized light hygro sensations we come to the all sensations one by one touch or sparse indriya or sparse the receptors are there in our skin and they are i i need not to uh, complicate you with the structures but sim simple to imagine that they are either on the skin or just below the skin sub subcutaneous the second thing is the kinesthesia or proprioception how we control our balance but in the philosophical language or philosophical literature this has not been acknowledged enough sensing movements orientation position of the body parts and the sense uh, receptors for these sense is lies in the joints and the muscles and it is supplemented by the signals from other portions of the skin eyes and the ear that's how our balance is decided now without kinesthesia we cannot watch our limbs how they are moving constantly from one position to the another vestibular sense or the sense of balance for which within the inner ear we have got the three semicircular canals uh, in the top diagram and it it is coordinated or coordinating the eye movements posture and equilibrium vestibular sense also comes here in the between and like this gyroscope this is unless we have got a good uh, a vestibular sense we cannot perform and these people have got the very very uh, high level of the vestibular sense our vertigo is also aberrations in the vestibular sense the next important one is the taste or ras indriyas perhaps the philosophy is more uh, interested in knowing the swad what is the role in the emotions and in the karmas it is a chemical stimulus earlier we were talking they are not all chemicals but swad unless it touches with the touch receptors in the mouth or back or in the throat the taste buds are papilla on the tongue it is being supplemented by the sensations from the smell the smell and the taste work together basic taste taste are sweet 
salt, sour, bitter. Recently, umami has also been added into the, this is a sensation related to the protein, yes. And we'll be talking in this one also. It has got a basic relation to the survival. In fact, all sensory functions, they are related to our survival. And this taste has got an important portion and to select the food and enjoy it. Ranaindriya or the smell. These are airborne molecules. They, receptor, they reach the receptors at the back of the nose and activate the receptors. It decides our behavior. It is not as strong as in the dogs or in the other uh, canines as in the human being. It is not that strong. The messages from the these uh, smell receptors, they come to our temporal lobe on the sides and goes to the limbic system. It's a, when, because of its uh, main location to the temporal lobe, it is also, whenever the smell comes, we also remember, yes, I have smelt it there. And it is related to the emotions and the environment. Vision. Though our uh, electro uh, the spectrum, the, this spectrum is a big one. And we are just seeing only a small portion of it. This electromagnetic spectrum, is, and you can see the three colors in the middle of the uh, this scale, which is there at the bottom. Now, these are the one, and we receive or we perceive the electromagnetic radiations only in this one. Whereas many animals, they go into the either side, infrared rays or ultraviolet rays. But beyond that one, whereas any animal kingdom, we are not able to see it. Chakshu Indriya, that's another the, for the vision, Drashti or the Chakshu. Electromagnetic wave travels around us and we perceive on the small spectrum. What important in the human being that we have got binocular, two eyes, which will give a stereoscopic vision to us. And second, we can differentiate lot many range of the color. It's a three-dimension depth perception because of the stereoscopic vision. Color vision has got a three important one, red, green, and the blue. Rest all impulses, they are combined, all colors, they are a combination of these three. All other colors are created by combination of the three. That's what we put it. Hearing, it's the auditory or our hearing link to the environment. And sound has got the three important qualities, loudness, pitch, and the timbre. It distinguishes quality of a sound. That's why we say good music, bad music, good speech, bad speech, like that one. And white noise is the all frequency at same time, approximately 20,000 uh, hertz. Now, this, if you look into our all sensations, like vision and the hearing, they do not have got the direct contact with the source. That is a, away from the source. Whereas for the touch, taste, we need a source to be touched with the human body. And this is the where anatomy of the ear coming from the external ear goes to the internal ear, cochlea, which is there. And from there, it goes to the brain. So to conclude about the basic of all the sensations, what we have observed, that there is a significant gap between the science, which is a physical phenomena, and the philosophy, which is a subjective. Perhaps consciousness may be a missing link which needs to be involved to explain the whole process of sensations in a physical way. Perceptions involve object sense and a complex process involving primary cortex, we'll be talking this later. 
sense association cortices and the memory cells. I talked to these in the last lecture also. Development of sensations, as in science, is similar to that in the philosophy with the addition of more and like a vestibular sense or the balance sense. But we are going to get many more sensations as the science progresses. This is my first part of the lecture. I'll be now putting on to the second portion, which will be concentrating more on the perceptions and correlation with the Jain philosophy. As I told you last in the last uh, uh, slide, process by which sensory receptors and the nervous system receive and represent stimulus energy from the environment to the brain or to the nervous structure. Whereas perception is organizing or interpreting this information which are coming from the sensation. So perception so is organizing, interpreting information and storing it for the future uh, requirement. When we take the Jan philosophy and the science together, there is a general agreement that sensory knowledge acquired through sense organs, brain and mind. Human brain is the highest developed neural structures in the animal. Perhaps there is a no two opinion on it. Perceptions, better understood by science in physical term, better understood by philosophical in the Jainism and in other religions. Let us see how we can explore it further. What is the, why, why this uh, uh, animal kingdom, they develop the perceptions from the sensations, how the perception, perception, sensations is just the impulse which has come. It has recognized that there is some danger or some uh, good thing is there. It is, perception has been born because of the needs. If we want it or desire it or beliefs, our beliefs may be real or not. Emotions, they add to the, our perceptions. And expectations, what you expect. Often, when we expect something, we try to see that more, uh, more seriously rather than uh, the one where we are unexpectedly taken into account. And the cultural and societal factors are the another one which influences the perceptions. Important point which uh, decides our perception is attention. We are constantly bombarded with the sensations all over, both from the outside body and from the inside body. Some sensations are automatic and require men minimal mental efforts. Whereas inattention blindness, though any sensations are coming, but we are not paid attention to it, it goes into the blindness. Blindness is not the eyes. It is a blindness of the perception. Then we are selective in our attention. So the focus is information received, focus remembered, while others are lost. They may be going into the hard disk, but is not in a position to recall it because it has not found any associations. Experiment has shown that emotions, physical state, and the motivations are important points in deciding our perceptions. When we are tired, our destination or the period which we want to travel often looks farther, whereas it is easy uh, when we are not tired. Similarly, with the heavy backpack, even our destination is not a shorter one. It's a farther one. A hill look steep, steeper with the heavy backpack, sad music and walking alone. And the reverse with the no weight or the small backpack, good music and walking with the crowd or with the company. It will be uh, not looks that steeper. So we enjoy those ones. So something you desire looks closer. And it's so 
your emotional state is the big one second is perception it is often said that the mind first make a uh, mind first decides or aspect something and then the perceptions is being comes later on that is the one way of deciding the perception so if i expect something i get it it is the what the perception says mean by the meaning that mind imposes and sometimes it can be a totally new one which has not come to me in the due course so we perceive the world not as it is but as it is useful to us or that is meaningful to us another say here i told you in the last lecture also in the last portion of my lecture visual hearing olfactory gustatory and touch now these are the panchendriya described in all philosophical religious literature science has identified two additional one is kinesthetic which decides our sense of position and motion and second is the balance or the vestibular sense it is possible that in near future we may be identifying more visceral sensations electromagnetic waves which will decide how we see the for or forecast the things which are to come reason for ignorance beyond panchendriya in philosophical literature is the subject of research or whether they have taken into consideration the kinesthetic and the vestibular sense i am not very sure a short word about the special senses while you are just seeing or you are just listening me so my speech is a motor act how it can be sensed because you are receiving it you are receiving my speech my communication so the sense of speech is one which is highest developed in the human being than in the animal kingdom it slowly travels from the uh, like uh, many many birds they sing they make noises like that one another is the sense of thought important point here is thoughts are internal in our mind it is within our brain but other person can also perceive it this is very important one chrono sense of time another important one we are aware that tomorrow what is going to be there yesterday what was there so we can correlate with the sense of time whether the sense of time it is a uh, thought or it is a sensation another one important one magneto reception i talked to you about the pineal gland in the last one it is believed that the parest pineal gland is the source or the site where the magnetic or the or uh, these impulses which are related to the magnetic changes magneto so they are parest pineal gland is the one many birds many fishes when they swim or they fly in the air they have got a strong magneto reception then there are many animal non any human animal sensations of these sensations they are either dormant or absent in the human being i told you about all the things hygro sensations jaise apan kahte hain ki hum jab barish hoti hai uske pehle hi ya bhukam aata hai to pehle hi animals they become more aware of that one human being is yet to develop or yet to be aware of these senses coming to the uh, where the science can co uh, uh, correlate with the jain philosophy it has been said that pudgal had got a five colors five taste two smells and eight touch now these numbers may have a variations by different people but such assertion should be confirmed with the neuroscientific investigations so that the people can believe it more and rather than just uh, assuming it sorry now there are two three principles which are there in our sensations and the perception 
one is the hierarchical process like in a big uh, center impulses or the information travels from the base and goes up to the higher post there is a reverse also so we call it bottom up or the top down uh, uh, processes all sensations have cortical and subcortical processes in higher animals and in humans we have got two relay stations one from the skin or uh, skin or from the taste it goes to the spinal cord or the brain stem where it gets the first relay then from there it goes to the higher in the brain uh, in the brain stem and then to the thalamus second relay station i'll say no point in talking in details but two relay stations at each relay stations the information is being processed modified deleted or sent upward our cortical analysis the top one it gives you conscious experience whereas the subcortical analysis gives you the unconscious processing or the automatic behavior next is the sensory adaptation this is another principle that if you are exposed to any sensations for a prolonged period it loses its sensitivity if i am uh, aware of a thermal heat then after some times it reduces its intensity similarly for the sound for the touch but it quickly restored when it goes down or it stops the perceptions or the perceptive ability they, that becomes to the normal one once again and selectivity all is receptors like a touch receptors will not receive, receive to the taste sensations and the taste sensations will uh, receptors will not receive the hearing one or the vision one most important point i talked in the earlier lecture also topographical means each portion of the brain has got a primary area where these sensations are received like for the vision i told you in the second slide of the my lecture fmri has identified that in the first one the vision is at the back hearing is on the sides these are the primary cortex areas smell is on the temporal lobes like that one so and from there it goes into the interconnections this is the beauty of the perceptions the next is important one principle is plasticity like a plastic you can stretch it it is a modulation of the functioning of a neuron as per the environmental change so if you look into this one if a neuron which is there for the touch it can be made into the or it can be changed into the another one perhaps the science is working on this one that can we change one function to the another function can a, a normal cell can be converted into the neurons it aims at optimizing the functions with the change in the role or in the immediate environment so this is the what plasticity is one of the important asset given to us by the nature threshold this is another important principle that we don't respond to a subliminal or the sub uh, threshold stimuli so the minimal intensity of the stimulus needed to detect half the time is absolute threshold it defines sensory words of the human and animals so we need not to have the sensory perceptions of a stimulus which is of the very mag small magnitude it depends on our alertness interest and past experiences and for perhaps expectations ours are different from animals and from each other we are not similar in the sensory world as far as the your sensory world may be different from the what i have got this is the what i talk to you but touch the most common one is sparsh the science has further divided this touch into the two important one precise informations 
and non-specific informations. Precise informations like fine touch, vibration, kinesthesia, proprioception. So these are the one. So this is the one. It crosses onto the opposite side, and then it ascends up. See on the left side. Where is the precise informations? They are non-localizing pain, pressure, temperature, root touch. It crosses to the opposite side in the spinal cord later on, not in the beginning. So what is the significance of these one? How they have developed? Now these are the points where perhaps science needs to learn from the philosophy that why it has occurred so. Why so many sensations have been developed from the simple to the touch or the chemicals which were there in the amoeba or the paramagia. And the three order I have already talked to you. From the this is our second first order, second order, and then third order. Two relay station, three orders. Now, before means I uh, will be going into the further information processing is how you make sensation sense of the word. What I am seeing, what I am perceiving. It is I can be either specific or it can be general. I told you last uh, in the last few minutes, bottom up processing from the lower one, the information ascends upward to the whereas the top down processing it guides our expectations. It's a higher level mental processing using ideas and expectations. Example being what am I seeing? It can be specific or the general. Or is that something which I have seen before comes to the top down and it correlates with the information store or the memory store which is there in our brain. Another, uh, I think, are two, three slides more. Another important one, we have got a two, two type of perceptions, either a stereotyped, means I have seen it earlier, and it is repeated, or it can be just a total new perception. Stereotyped or automatic is based on our learned behavior or quick set of responses because we have already made circuits in our brain for that information and for that perceptions. FMRI has identified major activity in the back or the occipital area of our brain, not reason, it is for all the sensations. Whereas the new experiences or the conscious perceptions is comes on the repeated or multiple perceptions, rep multiple repetitions, it turns auto and when it becomes repeated, it becomes automatic and it becomes a stereotype. So first you have a new information, new perceptions, then and here the prefrontal lobe and the temporal lobe, which is more most developed in the human being comes into the picture. Both can occur at awake, awake or conscious level or unconscious level. It is said that we are born with a large set of automated behavior and keeps on adding it to it in the lifetime. Perhaps here, a small word or correlating with the karmas, with the rebirth, whether it can be passed on the karmas, it is born with the large set of automated behavior. And how this comes is the point where the science is still ignorant. Whether automatic behavior comes from the previous birth or from the or from any other source, we need to. Another important point is we are good at the multi-sensory signal at a unisensory signals. One signal at a time can be perceived in a better way. Whereas the multi-sensory signals, when we are bombarded with the too many things by the vision, by the smell, by the touch or the taste, then perhaps we are not as efficient as we are. If you look into the animal kingdom, they are more concentrated on the unis unisensory signals. That's why a dog can smell, a, a elephant can listen to the sound, at a very far distance and we are not able to listen to it. So evolving field of science and many answer, answered queries are there. 
another important is that discriminative sensations. Can we discriminate high temperature to the low temperature, less tasty, extreme tasty, or too heat, or whatever? It is. So the, the, the discrimination is the one. And why there is a crossing occurs and the representation on the opposite side of the brain? Why not on the same side? These are the mysteries which are yet to be solved. Then role of primary, secondary, and the association cortex. Look into the brain which is there. A area which is there primary, then the secondary comes, the which is next to it. From the and then association and it keeps on associating with the other areas in the brain. Then how the thoughts are processes in the mind. Scientists and philosophy together can, if they work, perhaps they can unfold these mysteries. Now, you are very well aware of the of this one. With the achendrias, it was the touch. And later on, taste was added, then smell, vision, and the hearing. That's how the panchendriya this hierarchical development of the sensory organ, it is similar in the science and philosophy, confirming the evolution theory. It should be revised regarding number of the sensory organs, sensory tracts, and each sensations, like touch as we had seen, it is not only the single sense, it has got the multiple sub-branches. And, and which each one has got a different subcortical processing and crossing to the opposite side and sometimes may not. So the classification based on number of sensations, they are quite common with the science and the philosophy. Now to conclude my today's talk, a significant gap exists between science, a physical phenomena and the philosophy, which is the subjective perceptions or the impressions. And I said in the beginning, consciousness may be missing link. Perceptions involving object sense and a complex process involving primary cortex, association cortices, and memory stores. And as I talked in the last slide, development of sensations as in science is similar to that in the philosophy. Now, thanks a lot for the patience hearing. I'm sure this complex informations a large one, which is many, many, uh, say the terminologies are new to you, may have created some inquisitiveness in your mind. And I'll be glad to answer if there are any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. San Sanchiti, for giving talk on perception and sensation, how our brain is activating or functioning in both the ways. So you have, you have explained very well. I would uh, request all the participants, if they have some questions regarding the topic, they can ask. Miss Priyanka Jain, I think. Yes, Priyanka, you can ask. Please unmute yourself. Uh, unmute, Miss Priyanka, please. Are unmute, you? unmute. Your speaker is muted. Uh, Suril, can you unmute? I already asked her to unmute. Okay, so I, I think now was she un is. I was doing it. It was not <laughs> being done. I was not, <laughs> not able to do. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so uh, my my question is uh, a peep a few people uh, whose uh, conscious minds works a little less but their subconscious mind works a little more uh, it it used to be the uh, uh, opposite way like uh, uh, generally conscious minds work very well but subconscious does not work so very well but uh, for those people whose subconscious works very well so for those what kind of uh, these sensations and perceptions, how uh, how it all comes into picture for those whose subconscious minds work uh, strongly. Uh, you asked me the question which we'll be taking in the next uh, uh, lecture, the last lecture of mine. But 
just to briefly tell you, the conscious, subconscious mind perhaps is a bigger and bigger than the what we feel. If you uh, look into the mathematical figure, conscious mind is approximately 10% of the total mind complex. 90% is either subconscious or it is unconscious mind. So the unconscious processing or the subconscious processing is much, much bigger than the this. Uh, and our sensations or sensory receptor information goes through the all the stages or all the portions of the mind. So it is not that the it will go only to the conscious mind or it will go only to the subconscious mind, no. Second, our automated behavior is decided more by the unconscious mind and by the subconscious mind. Uh, but we will be touching this point in the little later that how big is the subconscious mind and uh, this one. But it's all what we call it in our language, it is conscious mind is just a tip of iceberg. That's a, just an answer to it. I hope I have answered it. Sir, uh, actually, I want to ask that uh, we do perceive things uh, through sensations. So that goes into our conscious mind. But uh, for no, our... No, 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 not necessary. Not necessary. All the informations, they can go directly to the subconscious or unconscious mind. Okay. Unconscious mind is generally not there. But subconscious mind, which is there between the con unconscious mind and the conscious mind, it receives all the informations, whether we are aware of that one. So the awareness, and so this is a very small portion. We'll be talking, as I told you, will be in the next one. And there I'll be able to clear it more rather than having the time here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bindisha, you can ask. Please unmute yourself. Okay. Anybody else has some question? Yes. Uh, so, Samani uh, Shashitagyaji, she can ask first and then Anokji and Bhatia as well. I have added two things uh, with the sensation that is kinesthetic and vestibular sense. What do you mean by that? And second is we have discussed about the cortical analysis and subcortical analysis. Uh, can you please clear it in a specific yeah, context? Yeah, yeah. Now, one the coming to the first question, the vestibular sense is the sense of the balance. Okay. And and, and its receptors. What we have seen hearing in the inner ear, we have got the cochlea that is associated with the hearing. Whereas the semicircular canals, they are concerned with the balance, which has not been taken into consideration. That is the why I wanted to point out that the sense of balance is very, very important. The okay. second thing is the conscious, uh, sorry, the proprioceptions or the kinesthetic senses. Kina means movement, kinesthetic mm -hmm. movement. Now this movement which is there, it decides our position of the our body portions in the time and place and in the environment. And it is here that when I move, I, when I uh, say uh, uh, touch my uh, toes mm -hmm. and keep my heel up, this portion is decided in the there which there there in the muscles and in the joints at the anchor. Similarly, when I raise my finger the joint sensations. They decide how much I have to raise it so that I don't touch the flame or I don't uh, prick my uh, finger because of that one. So the position sense, to some extent, the uh, movement sense that decides and that is where the information keeps on coming from the kinesis. So these sensations, they were initially we were when we said the spurs, we were mainly concerned with the touch, spurs. We were not concerning the other portions of the sensation. We were concerning about the heat. We were concerning about the uh, basic sensations, but not the fine sensations or the specific sensations. So that's why the, we feel that perhaps balance is, and perhaps there is a feeling in our scientific language or scientific mm -hmm. world that we are going to add many more sensations in the future to come. 
Now coming to the cortical and the subcortical processing. Cortical processing, though both can be occur, both cortical and subcortical can occur at a unconscious or subconscious level where you are not aware of that. But to be have a conscious processing, um, uh, processing while being aware, we need to have the cortical processing. So the cortex is there or the top one, where the subcortical, it occurs either at the basal ganglia or the thalamus. Whereas sub uh, the cortical processing occur at the cerebral cortex, main cortex. This can be either uh, aware or unaware. No, actually, subcortical analysis, you told the unconscious event. What do you yeah. mean by unconscious event? Uh, means we are not unconscious. It's a, we are not aware. We are not awake or aware about those analysis. Like I am listening to you. It is yes. occurring at a cortical level. Okay. 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 Uh, one more thing. You told that uh, I uh, eye sensation is uh, connected with the back side of the brain and uh, yeah. you are hearing both the left and right side of the no, I, I'm not. I'm not able to listen to you. The eye, the eye sensations are connected to the back. You said mm -hmm. after that. Uh, hearing, hearing. I want ah. to know the. Ah. Now about hearing. Hearing is basically auditory. What we call the auditory or the hearing. The grand, uh, uh, the, so this is at the side, the temporal lobe, my temple, temporal bone. It is here. The this cortex. Now, I, as I told you, these are the primary sites of receiving the information. Back or the temple or the top. Like they are the primary sites. But when it comes to the secondary means it is further analyzed, then it may not be there only limited to the back. Vision is not limited to the back. It can travel to the front, prefrontal cortex also. And when the association cortex comes, it is spread throughout the brain. So the primary uh, primary site of analysis, secondary site of analysis, and then the association. That's how the human brain is being characterized by a large amount of association cortex. Thank you. Now, Aloji, you can ask question. Yeah, well, I Amino mean, Swami Sandhiji, and, and thank you, Dr. Sanchetti. So it was a profound lecture. Thank you very kindly. My question to you is we have often heard that the information. A little louder, please. The, inf the information that we receive, it's stored in a multi dimensional way in our brain. How many such that, you know, I mean, you may be listening to a sound or a song. But what is also stored is when did you hear it? At what point in time? What the environment was like? What the weather was like? So how many such dimensions are there in which the information is stored? And does it vary from person to person? And if it does, what is the cause of its variance? This is the what we call as a correlative processing. As the today's lecture, I have delivered it. I know the People are there sit, uh, on the Zoom, and I am seeing their some of the I am seeing their pictures also. Some of them may go into my my brain also. I mean, they will be registered. In fact, everyone everyone has been registered. But like uh, some uh, people have not opened up their videos, so that is also registered in my brain. But where I am interested, or I am more concerned, or it's my my psyche that decides which information is to be pulled. So it is like a large amount of information within the brain. And we can correlate, we can correlate and either we can correlate while storing or correlating while taking it out also. Yes, mm -hmm. today was the thing that I was sitting in a non-AC room under a fan or without fan, or it was a high temperature or the background of yours was blue. Now I can I can remember that one. Depending upon 
how much i am interested in the picture behind you and and this is all occurs at a subconscious or unconscious level i am not aware that the things which are there with the someone has got a building behind him and another one has got a, uh, a sofa behind him or her so that's why the very so it all depends upon the correlation and this correlation depends upon the expectations interest your background your societal structures now if you are like that one when someone talks me about the egg or the meat it doesn't strike me that much whereas if somebody says paneer it strikes me a bigger way so unless but suppose i am i am going with the taste of the meat i have not taken it but i am lured lured with the taste then i'll try to listen to that one i try to visualize that one i though i am not i am not testing it but i am visualizing the things i am imagining the things. that's all so you see me the second follow up question to this uh, yes sir means that our ability to perceive from a philosophical standpoint we say it's related to karmas but from a scientific standpoint what is the explanation that what we perceive is yeah, depending our upon our ability to perceive varies from people's uh, person to the, the, the factors which i just now mentioned my expectations my mm-hmm. education my societal background my cultural background my how i have been brought up in the early childhood now these are there are so many things which are there in the is a complex one and not a single event and it's a wrong to decide it on a single event that's what i personally feel it's a multi multi dimensional mm-hmm. we are just on a small portion which we are able to explain it but the majority we are not able to explain so is me you are also saying that we are receiving all of this information and we may not even be aware that it is stored within us yeah so as our awareness improves can we then recollect it back adding awareness later on may not be the mm-hmm. perhaps one mm-hmm. because it mm-hmm. is just like a in a big garbage you are searching a thing which is there so to take out from that big garbage like i have today's lecture i am talking and i am just seeing a blue background just at the back of you and mm-hmm. i am interested in the blue i might mm-hmm. have stored it that one then i may be able to correlate when i am trying later on mm-hmm. but if i am not aware or say i have not interested for us to find out from that garbage mm-hmm. it's a very difficult very very means un, un, uh, uh, unlikely <coughs> thank you sir thank you yes sir okay so sir so, bhakti ji you want to ask some question bhakti ji you can unmute yourself unmute sir okay sorin and can you unmute okay i requested them no. to unmute okay patia ji can you alakya ji can you yeah, yeah. now it is I have, i have been able to uh, unmute i bandami um, namaskar and dr sancheti very very useful for me because i lost memory i lost everything alok bhai knows everything and uh, basic question is dr sanche uh, kacharya dr dr kachara last week he said don't confuse brain and mind they are completely different now my first question is when you say unconscious mind subconscious mind conscious mind is there anything like unconscious brain or what i am saying is that it looks to me that uh, 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 this gap is increasing more and more and what is the reason that uh, um, a man does man means any living being uh, discovers so many things while he is completely uh, unconscious or you can say in a sleeping mode so please correct me uh, it's a perhaps what you mean 
with the awake or aware you you are meaning not unconscious awake and aware of that one is awake means sleeping or awake and another is aware means i am interested in that one or not aware is that one whether i am able to put it in the my awareness world many things which are going on my sides but i am not aware of that whereas those which are there in the center of my brain or my eyes or I, or any other sensations i am aware, aware of that so it is what perhaps you mean that no but what information is there available on the either side of my my vision or my visual field i am also perceiving that one also whether by their movements by their hello which we will be talking in the next lecture also uh, now they are occurring lot many electromagnetic waves are there i am perceiving some of them but but they may not be in my conscious mind and the second thing is uh, your question or a, some word you used was about the unconscious mind uh, unconscious brain or the conscious brain in fact i can tell you brain is not conscious at all it processes the information to the consciousness it does it doesn't even one more information which i didn't give you in the my lectures the brain is a painless organ brain is a, so even if on the awake brain person with the awake brain if i put a knife on it doesn't feel any sensations but what pain comes in my head or headache is due to the muscles blood vessels and blood vessels within my brain those are the one and some of the membranes which are there they are pain sensitive the brain itself as a structure is painless so the consciousness is not the one in fact entire processing in the brain is like a computer hard disk though it is not a correct uh, presentation it is a like computer hard disk whatever i am seeing on the my laptop screen right now what is happening within my hard disk how the processor is working that is a subject where the mind comes into the this kita do kita yes thanks it's uh, now bindisha if you have some question bindi yeah bindisha you can unmute yourself i uh, sorry what happens to bindi uh mindy ji you can already i already sent it to her to request okay you can yes okay. i think yeah, she thanks. um i'm unmuted uh vandami naman swami sami ji and uh, pranam professor um so you know i've got two questions uh they're not really related so the first one is you know the unconscious mind you talk about um does it have does it store imprints like the subconscious mind um and my second question is uh people who have avdhi gnan or manapari gnan their uh, brains or minds they work differently okay the to give the simple answer to your second question no all brain whether it is a most uh, uh, literate person illiterate persons observant person non observant person brain is the same there may be some degree of uh, ability or the intelligence which is there some degree but majority of it it is almost the same so the second question there is a no difference between the different people whether he is a person or he is a butcher with the things or he is a saint with the big uh, compassion and the love no they say not true they have got is, the similar so is is the mind different then yeah i say absolutely that's it okay but the first question i couldn't get it properly if you can repeat so, it so yeah the first question is to do with the unconscious mind um uh, you know with the unconscious the subconscious mind actually uh, it stores a lot of your experiences your imp past imprints etc so the unconscious mind would it also have uh, the the imprints 
the past imprints. Yeah, absolutely. The information which is there in my conscious mind, it may not last longer in the awareness, in the conscious, but it filters out to the subconscious and then it goes or is stored for a longer period and is a long, large information in the unconscious mind. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so okay. again, I, I'll be talking in the le next lecture, but to give you the, some mathematical figure, which is not true, that is just a representational figure, 10% is the conscious mind, 20 to 40% will be the subconscious mind and uh, rest up to 60% will be the unconscious mind. So you may be very good in the conscious mind and may be very poor compared to the other person in the subconscious or the unconscious mind. So we all are same. We are category by, but it's our environment, our culture that makes a difference. Our thoughts and belief, they are very big issues. Some of things we can translate or uh, analyze it. Some we may not be able to. Okay, so that, that means that um, I think the Gotra karma and the Nam karma and all that plays a big role for, for the subconscious and the unconscious mind then, isn't it? Uh, I think uh, Samniji and the Kacharasa will be able to answer the details about the Nam. I've just uh, okay, read yeah. it. Uh, I'm really not uh, able to correlate with the, my knowledge which is there. It is sure. there. It is there. But whether they really exist or not, whether they are uh, there to... But see, they are point of disagreement. But I'm not able to comment it. Perhaps they will be in their lectures later on or in the your answer to your query, they will be able to give it. Okay, thank you. can uh, say something. Kacharasan, would you like to answer? Uh, unmute, sir. <clears throat> uh, the question which is there, uh, the correlation of uh, mind and karma. Uh, is, is that the question? Yes. Um, Kind of, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mind uh, is, a, is the product of Gati Karma. Uh, Gati Karma uh, concerns with the structure of brain. And as far as Jain philosophy is concerned, mind and brain are different things. Okay. So mind works uh, with gati karma and brain is a construction of agati karma, nam karma. So that is the, the, the distinction you know, which you can make. Uh, how the, you know, the mind works you know, is, is a different thing. What is a subconscious mind, unconscious mind and a conscious mind you know, which we are discussing. Uh, Conscious mind, uh, uh, I think, are connected with the sensations, you know. Uh, Dr. Sanchez can correct me. You know, uh, if there are sensations and the sensations are being processed by brain, we are conscious of that, you know. But the things which we are not conscious of are not going through the senses, you know. They are coming from the mind, you know, the back of our mind, you know, and particularly the bhav mind, you know. So we have two kinds of mind, dravya mind, dravya man, and bhav man. And this we will discuss in, in my lecture in the next class. Uh, uh, I agree with uh, some of the observations. What yes. you have mentioned, that the things which the conscious mind is concerned with the external sensations, yeah. and not the internal sensations. Yeah. Sensations which are there in my own visceras, my yes. own lungs. The, yes. the conscious mind yeah. is not concerned with not, that. Not, 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 yes, okay. External, external sensations. And you, even if you take it, the yeah. automatic behavior. That's right. Is also partly subconscious. 
Yes, yes, yes. Subconscious, yes. We are not conscious of what is happening in the body. <laughs> yes. 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 Thank you. Just one thing I want to add that according to scriptures, there are um, innumerable gradations in our uh, process of uh, uh, in what we say in processing of informations which we are getting through senses. It depends on the purity or you can say ability to know, the power of ability to know anything. How much we can know, how much we cannot know. So that depends on the purity of the self. Yes. And each person has different uh, um, level of purity, different level of knowledge, sensations. And that's why some, some of the things are being governed by from inside and some are we are perceiving through senses. So the, the conscious mind especially is connected with the sense, sense perceptions or thinking. And the subconscious mind is uh, getting uh, information from inside, depending on the maturity of level of knowing capacity. And yes. that is, uh, that is uh, being governed by the unconscious mind. That is being governed by the karmic body and the purity of the self. Yes. So there are innumerable gradations. It differs person to person, depending on the ability of knowing. This much I wanted to say. Mandami, uh, uh, what I wanted to, by what you just said, so if it is depend on the chetna or soul, the consciousness, what or ability to do the things, uh, which is called mind, subconscious mind or unconscious mind. So how does that relate it to the autonomic nervous system of our body, which produces the things like when we do the when we get scared or we get anything it's the autonomic nervous system which comes in the picture and then we take care of it by meditation by decreasing the uh, respiration and heart rate so how does the both our autonomic nervous system is connected to the chetna So, Professor Kasankiti, uh, would you like to answer? Uh, if you look into the autonomic nervous system, okay. the word itself is auto, A-U-T-O. -U. It means it has to be automatic. So, it comes, so you are not aware about that. The, you have to differentiate between the two points, awake and aware, and being perceived, perception. That can be direct perceptions when you are awake and aware. And you can have perceive a perception when you are not aware of. Even then, so like if I am exposed with a threat, my sympathetic nerves comes, sympathetic nervous system comes into the action. And the time I want to heal myself, I want to enjoy the things, parasympathetic comes into the play. So the auto, so they are part of the consciousness, both. But perhaps it is the interface. Uh, I put it personally. It is like a subconscious mind, which is interface interface between the conscious and the unconscious. So it is interface. So there are a lot many uh, intermingling on the both the sides. So part of this one will be the conscious processing. Part will be the unconscious process. So the autonomic nervous system. And as I told you in the, my one of my slides, stereotyped and the new. So the stereotype is automatic. Correct. And and the the this one, uh, what you are talking about, the conscious is a we are we are exposing it as a uh, new new informations which are coming to us. But it's not so. We are bombarded with the information all the times. So at the same time, I'm exposed to the new information. At same time, I'm going into the stereotype also. Yeah, because we do the same thing. We use uh -huh. the chemical. We do the same thing. Uh -huh. I'm an anesthesiologist. So yeah. we do the same thing. We we reduce the heart rate or increase the heart rate. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you can we play with it. 
we play with all those things all the time yes. consciously uh, for the unconscious patient um, no, but but you are play play playing with the person who is not part of the game correct and uh, so the person is unconscious or the sub subconscious during that but we, we play with their chetna or we play with yeah, their yeah. Yeah, heart the, 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 so that's about how the chemical playing that's about that, you, you you can short with summarize it chemical playing exactly whereas the meditation is a is a voluntary yeah. playing it is a playing with your own efforts Correct. with your own thoughts so these are the one thank you i think we can divide uh, this automatic process in two parts Uh, one automatic process is going inside the body and one automatic response you know or to external stimuli you, you are, yeah, correct uh, okay so there we can divide it in two parts the first one the automatic processes inside the body they are connected with agati karma that's number one and number 2 the second part your response to external stimuli is decide is concerned with gati karma so uh, there is a different way of uh, processing inside this soul as far as the soul is concerned you know okay the soul uh, responds differently to 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 these two different phenomena if uh, if i am correct you know so is that, does that answer the, the question which uh, the doctor has asked i think your logic is very near to it yeah. okay <laughs> okay <laughs> because um, i i give sometimes anesthesia to the person we keep them awake and just yes. like dr sanchetti said that the yes. brain has no pain so yeah as so we we give them a lock to cover the skin but then as soon as they open the brain we make them to speak the words and the patient is awake those surgeon is touching yeah, yeah. the uh, uh this part of the brain which is basically speech center oh point correct so i think all the questions are answered <clears throat> so again yeah latia ji uh, latia ji has some question you can unmute yourself you are yeah, yeah. yes na uh, so latia ji is asking question ha vandana me namami namami vinda samri ji jai jai vinda to doctor sir it is it was really very uh, wonderful uh, lecture but i just wanted to uh, know like uh, uh, all like we believe in how is the first sense first sensation is uh, registered or is known is it because of uh, uh, see there is no memory in the when there is a first uh, experience of any perception or touch or any sensation is taking place now the some of the western philosopher say that it is a innate knowledge now how is that these are connected ah uh, uh, sir i if you just go into one of my slide mm -hmm. i wrote or i i mentioned there that we are born with a large amount of informations which are automated but whether this comes from the previous birth or from the present birth that we are getting into it or something is added to later on i am not answering that one but what the certain information certain reactions they are inbuilt in our system whether our dna rna or for anything whether the karma has got influence over that one that's i am not touching that one so these informations the first sensations as you said if you look into the history or the psychology the first information first information the child gets is the touch when he, when he, someone holds him in the hand 
the baby you hold the hand then this is the first sensation which come and perhaps in the hierarchical development touch is the first one but people say that even in utero also the sensations are there even the sensations of the hearing vision may not be there perhaps the vision to which we are aware that electromagnetic spectrum that may be there within the utero also in the within the placenta also so we are not very sure we are incompetent right now to answer that one but the information first sensations in the awake or the life outside the baby outside the mother is the touch that's what everyone we knows and similarly this is the one which is developed in the unicellular also in the amoeba and the paramecium also the first sensation is the touch right okay thank you thank you very much yes yes according to scriptures also one since living beings have only the touch sense so it is only the sense which is found in all the living beings from one sense to five sense and all the senses developed first with touch sense so this is the minimum uh, ability of knowing of any living being through sense and touch sense uh, just to add samne ji Yes. Uh, the, the first sensations which is there in the animal kingdom is the chemical sense. It uh, amoeba and paramecium they get the chemical changes in the environment. Whereas what we are aware or we are discussing in the literature is the touch which is mechanical, associated with the emotions. So that is the difference. So there are lot many. So touch is not simply. one it can be any change in the environment that's what we put it any change in the environment be it chemical be it be physical or be it be touch it can be so the touch is the one where we need to sharpen our knowledge both in the neurological angle or the scientific angle and from the philosophical angle that's my feeling is it, that we must sharpen our and rather than simply saying touch touch we are meaning or say what is being described in the literature or in the, this one that is related to the mechanical sparse touch a uh, touch with the emotions that's what i feel that is the what has been described in the literature uh, okay so it is a new information for me uh, generally we analyze uh, Uh, any sense from one perspective and not from other different other perspectives so that is new information from science side okay. so i think uh, almost all the questions are answered yeah so you have some question you can ask this is the last question okay the voice is not so clear so loud whatever you are not audible uh sanjeet ji i want to ask whatever sense experience we have whether it is touch taste smell color or it is directly related with the brain or with mind uh if i have to uh, give you a answer in the science or in the neurological language mm -hmm. brain has got the last one to get it affected other neural structures as i told you in the my one of the slide that it is a two relay stations each relay station they get the informations it is like a train when it goes from the one station to another station relay the informations are there goes to the second one then it goes to the third one and all the informations in the first instance doesn't go into the third one in the first instance it goes to the second one and second one takes out or give the part important informations to the third one so at each relay station they are analyzed 
and they are filtered and they are propagated. So the perception in true sense, it occurs even at the first realization also, but it may not be aware perception, awake perception. That's what. Sir, so, thank you all, Professor and Dr. Sanchiti, for answering so many questions. And uh, I think all the uh, what is it, participants are satisfied for, for with the answers. And if they have some questions, we have another uh, lecture of Professor Sanjeevi in the end of the course, especially on 26th uh, August. So might be you will get some more answers on that day. So today, this is enough for us. And I am very much thankful to Professor Gachara, Professor Sanjeeti, and all of our participants. So we have three more lectures to complete the course. Thank you for joining and having so much patience. Yes. Thank you. Thanks.